Welcome back to The Distressed Princess. In today's video, I'm recounting the top 12 of my favorite Christmas DIYs. For the next part of the garland, get back out the Model Light Air Dry Clay, and we're gonna make some marshmallows. And this clay makes the best marshmallows because it's so fluffy. So you'll need to roll out a little marble-sized ball then to make it a marshmallow shape, just squish in the top and bottom with two fingers and roll around the edges with your other two fingers and this will make a mini marshmallow. And you'll also need to make some larger marshmallows, so just make a larger ball and it's the same process, just squish in the top and bottom and kind of roll out the sides. Then I laid out the pattern for my garland. So all together, I made four large marshmallows and 20 small marshmallows, and I only used five of my gingerbread snowflakes. Now I'll string it all up using some Baker's twine from the Dollar Tree and a yarn needle, and these just string up perfectly. Um, they get a little misshapen on the ends where the needle comes out the other side, so you fix each one of those as you string them on but it's just really simple and pretty quick and then I tied the gingerbread snowflakes to the Baker's twine in the pattern that I chose which was too many marshmallows on each side and then a large marshmallow too many marshmallows and on and on number one I'm using three different sizes of these glass shades and you're also going to need some clear silicone or e6000 now keep your mind open we're going to build a Christmas tree the middle size one stacks on top of the largest one and you want to move it around and make sure you get an idea of where the contact points are like where these two pieces of glass actually connect and then you use your E6000, or in my case, the clear silicone, and you glue them together. And the top piece actually is not a ceiling fan globe. I think it is a wall sconce globe because it has a closed end. It doesn't have the open end on the bottom. So as you guessed it, we're going to glue that on the top. Make absolutely sure that your adhesive is cured. I waited overnight before continuing on. Now we're gonna paint it up. You could use any kind of white paint that would be suitable for adhering to glassware, but I am really loving the Fusion Mineral paint. It is sticking to everything that I would use chalk paint with. So um, there's Links in my description box, you know I'm an affiliate, so I can hook you up with some wonderful fusion mineral paint. And I used two coats on my glass Christmas tree. Now I'm gonna antique it just using some nutmeg brown acrylic paint. And don't worry, it's gonna look like I'm heavy handed with it, but I'm not one that I like to make everything just look brown after I've painted it white. So um, I'm gonna put kind of a dry brush layer of the brown paint, but I am going to go back over it again with more white paint and you'll see the difference. So here it is toward the end of the brown paint treatment. And now watch what happens when you go over that brown with some white. So the brown is still showing through, but just a hint and it doesn't look, you know, dirty. It just looks antiqued. For the star, I'm using this snowflake ornament that came from the Dollar Tree last year. Now, mind you, I've not bought any new Christmas things for this Christmas series. Everything that I'm using has come from Goodwill and just whatever little pine sprigs or little decorations I took out of my shed. So these are all made without having to drag out all your Christmas decorations. 
I didn't really like the jewel center of the snowflake. It was a little too blingy for my antique tree. So I just put some white paint over that. For the most part today, I'm using my star bond glue in a lot of these projects because when I really do need it to hold, if it's a precarious little situation like attaching this star to the top of this tree, I need something that's gonna hold quickly and strong. So I'm using the thick star bond glue and you'll put that on one piece. So I'm gonna put that on the glass part and then the spray can accelerator gets sprayed on the other part. So I'm gonna spray that on the snowflake and then you attach the two together and the hold is almost instant. You just have to hold it for a few seconds and it's there, it's, it's holding and good. Now for decorating the tree, I'm using some of this scrap ribbon that came from burlapfabriconline.com and they are very, very reasonable. If you need burlap for any of your projects or ribbon like this, they also have linen. Um, I'll include a link in my description box and you can go to town shopping on their website. But I am going to try to make some little spirally, oh, what do you call them? Like ribbons falling down a tree. And I've wrapped the ribbon around the top of the tree and I'm securing it with my star bond glue. The two pieces will drape down the left and right sides of the tree. I will make two more, but at this point I hadn't decided that yet. The next step that I did was I wanted this ribbon to be curled. And so I had a great idea. Maybe I could just use my curling iron and hairspray. <laughs> so I sprayed the hairspray on the ribbon first and I let that dry. And I had my curling iron heated up to 400 degrees and I just rolled it up like I would do my hair. I held it in place for about 10 seconds and then I let it go to see what would happen. And my idea actually worked. So if you wanna curl some fabric ribbon this way, I don't see anything wrong with it. Just be careful that you're not using it around any place where you used any glues because some of the glues are very flammable. I know hairspray is too, but you know, that's fine. We use hairspray and curling irons on our hair all the time. Just stay away from the glue spots. So here's where I realized I actually need two more of those curling ribbons, one for the front and one for the back. So I wrapped another piece around and secured it in place with my star bond glue and I curled those up. I love how my Christmas tree turned out and I found a use for those old ceiling fan globes. Some pretties for the table. I'm starting with these glasses that I got from Goodwill for only 89 cents a piece and I'm going to take them outside and spray them with this frosted glass spray. The spray dries very very quickly. I did do two coats and I would say the whole thing was dry within 30 minutes and I was able to bring them back in and work on them more. I liked these glasses because they had these dimples in the sides that made them just a little bit different than regular drinking glasses. My idea is to frost the bottoms of them with this fake snow. It's the iridescent kind, but you could probably use Epsom salts or something like that too. And for this, I'm using clear glue from the Dollar Tree to stick that fake snow on. And I'm using a foam brush to brush it around. This is the simplest thing ever. I just put a little bit of glue on the bottom part of the glass brushed it around with my foam brush, and then sprinkled that snow on top. After I got it sprinkled on top, I packed it down with my hands, and then I shook off the excess. I did this all around the bottom of both glasses, and there you go, a very inexpensive and beautiful way to turn these glasses into candle holders. And right before everyone sets down, don't forget to light your candles. And here it is all put together and I was really, really happy with it. Dupe 
is inspired by these birch trees from Pottery Barn. And man, check out that price. The main ingredients here is a big piece of poster board and some brown craft paper. On the poster board, I just freehanded sort of a collar shape so that I can make my cone. And then I cut the cone shape out. Then you'll roll the cone shape into your Christmas tree shape. And I used regular scotch tape to hold it all in place. At this point, you should have something that looks like this. Next, we'll start working on the birch. I'm gonna call them petals, birch petals. And the way that I'm going to accomplish the look of birch is by painting this brown craft paper with some white acrylic paint. And I'm just going to lightly brush it on, but not too uniform. It's going to be heavier in some places and lighter in other places, but I'm going to do a great big piece of this brown craft paper because I want a lot of those birch bark petals. Next, I used some of the scrap poster board to draw a petal shape onto, which I'm going to cut out and use as a template. Then I used the template to trace around and I made a whole bunch of those birch bark petals. Cutting all these little pieces out can take some time, so just throw on a Christmas movie. I actually had the Wonder Years on in the background and I listened to the one where Kevin had the big pimple and then the one after that, he wanted to be in a rock and roll band. He got an electric guitar. And by the time I got done with those two episodes, this craft was completely finished. So I'd say it's probably took about 30 minutes to cut out all of these pieces. Before you can start gluing your birch pieces on, you need to put your lights around the tree because the one at Pottery Barn did light up. So I had these lights that I actually bought last year and I think they are from Walmart. They were less than $5, but really awesome LED lights. I started at the top of the tree because I wanted the battery pack to hide underneath the tree. So I taped the top piece in place with scotch tape and then I just wound it around the poster board tree until I got to the bottom. And when I got to the bottom, I put another piece of tape to hold it there and the battery pack goes right underneath. Now we can start adding the birch petals and I'm using craft glue from the Dollar Tree to do this just because I didn't want to have all that stringy spider webby mess that goes along with hot gluing things. So you do you, if you wanna use hot glue, it'd probably be easier and of course not take as much drying time. You don't have to be as careful but that's the route that I went. To make them look more like the flared out birch log bark, whatever petals on the Pottery Barn tree, I did use a pencil to roll up the ends to make them kind of curl outward. And again, this process can take some time. So this was the episode where Kevin was playing the electric guitar I was listening to the whole time that I was gluing these birch petals onto this tree. And as I went along, if any of the light bulbs were sticking straight out, then I took a piece of scotch tape and I taped them down flat against the tree, just so it would be easier to put those birch petals on top of them. And this is how it's looking with all the birch petals glued on. Now the next step is to finish the top. You wanna to leave a little space at the top because the Pottery Barn version had, it looked like some jute twine at the top. So we're going to wrap some jute twine at the top of ours too. So I just used a regular jute string and I hot glued it down to keep it in place and I wrapped it up. Then a little dot of hot glue at the top to keep it all in place. And this dupe is done. It is beautiful and I think my favorite one today.
Hoop is this whole set of wooden Christmas trees and they looked like they would be easy to replicate instead of paying the $30. Now you might already have some scrap wood to make this project, but if you don't, then take a trip to a lumber store. I went to Menards and they have this value wood section and I got two really nice pieces of pine, I think it is, for only $1.29 each. Then using the dimensions of the trees that were actually in Kirkland's, I drew out the trees onto the piece of wood and kindly asked my husband to take it down to his power saw and cut them out for me. So that's pretty easy, just cutting out some triangles. Now we need to find some stars to use. And I had this pack of stars that came from the Dollar Tree around the 4th of July, I believe. But if you don't have any in your craft stash, then you can take a trip to Hobby Lobby or even Michael's and find some wooden stars to go on top. The next step is to paint and stain your trees. And so I'm starting with the one that is supposed to look like it's a wood stain. And my first inclination was to use the Waverly Antique Wax. And so I watered down some of it and I applied it to the wood. And I guess uh, different colors of stain uh, does differently on different kinds of wood. Like this is naturally kind of a yellowish wood so when I put the antique wax on, it, it came out very yellowish and I wasn't really pleased with that. So I had to remedy it. So the next thing that I did was use my Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle and I watered it down and I put that on and let it set for a little bit and wiped it back off. And then that was more of the warm wood color that I was going for. And while I had that brown watered down paint out, I went ahead and painted the stars. Now I'm not for certain, but I think the stars in Kirkland's might be gold. It was hard to tell on the box, but um, I'm just gonna leave mine with a wood stain. Next, I'm going to work on the green tree. I had two different kinds of green paint, a Christmas green and marsh green. I decided to use the Christmas green and darken it up with just a little bit of black paint. Now with my custom color of green paint all mixed up, I applied it to the tree. And the smallest tree in the bench is a white tree, but I'm going to use sort of a white wash with it because the little white tree also has some white markings on it for like little uh, pine needles or something. And I want them to be able to show up really good. So that's why I'm using a white wash instead of straight white paint so that when I use the straight white paint for the little details, it will show up. To soften up the brown on the brown tree, I used some sandpaper to kind of distress it a little bit and blend in that color so that it looks a little bit more like the Kirkland's version. Then I drew on some rectangles going off of the picture from the Kirkland's site. I just made some small little rectangles where the words will go and I just used a paint stir stick to make straight lines. So that I would get nice clean lines, I used some scotch tape where I drew the pencil marks and I'm going to tape it up so that the paint only goes where that rectangle is. And while I'm painting in these little black rectangles, I wanna thank everyone who is a new subscriber. I'm so happy to have you here. After the black paint is dry, then peel the tape off for the satisfying reveal. The next thing I did was add the words. The words are merry and bright. And I'm using a white paint pen from the Dollar Tree to write them into my black rectangles. And I just tried to use the best handwriting I possibly could. And I've learned over the years, in order to center your words within something like this rectangle, then you'll wanna start with the middle letter or the middle two letters and work your way outwards. Now it's time to add the details to each tree. The green tree had some stars, so I just used the smallest, finest paintbrush that I had and some white paint to paint in some stars. 
the white tree had just some little tiny lines that would go straight down so I painted those on and the brown tree had white dots that looked like snow so I just used the end of my paintbrush and tapped those little white dots on and the final step is to hot glue the stars on top and this dupe is done how I am such a sucker for a gingerbread house. So this Christmas, I'm going to dupe my own. I've had this birdhouse that I got from a Dollar Tree Plus that was only $5 and it may not be the exact same layout as the houses on Grandin Road, but I'm gonna paint it and decorate it up just like those. So as you saw, the first thing I did was cut off its hanger and there's a hole there where the hanger was, but it will get covered up. Next, I'm gonna mix some paints to get a gingerbread color. I know that there is a color called nutmeg in the folk art acrylic paint section of Walmart, but uh, I don't have that one. <laughs> so I'm mixing chestnut and I think light mocha to try to get a gingerbread color. I painted the whole house except for the windows, the door, and the steps. Then I painted the windows with white acrylic paint and the steps with the same white paint and for the door, this Caribbean blue. Next, we're going to work on the decoration part and you'll be needing some of this caulk that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I did at first try to use this straight out of its squeeze tube right onto the roof of the house, but that didn't go very well. Uh, it really needs to be a thinner consistency, so that's why I'm squeezing out this whole tube into an old dish, an old bowl. I'm going to mix about two tablespoons of white acrylic paint in with it, and then I'm going to put that, I'm going to mix it up really well, and then put that into a piping bag, and then it, it came out perfectly. It was a lot easier to work with. And the trick to getting anything inside of a piping bag is to put it down inside of a cup. I'm using a coffee mug and that way you can use both your hands to scrape out <laughs> the icing or whatever. And Piper just came to see if there was icing for him to lick, but it wasn't. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So here is my piping bag ready to cut the tip. And I'm not using a special decorator tip. I didn't have one small enough, but if you do, feel free. Um, I'm just gonna cut the end off of this bag and start piping. Then with steady, even pressure on the bottom end of that piping bag, just draw on your little doodads right onto the roof. And mine weren't perfect, but you know, I'm never looking for perfect. I was happy with how it turned out. Next up, I'm going to do the garland that goes around the door. And for that, I'm using some of this lightweight spackle from the Dollar Tree. And it becomes a fluffier consistency when you pipe it onto a project. So I thought it would make a better garland than that slickish caulk stuff. So the same principles though, just um, mix some of that spackling with a little bit of green acrylic paint and put it into a piping bag and then you can pipe a garland. I do apologize. I lost the footage where I was piping the garland, but really it was just making little swirly marks around the door with that green spackle. And then I used some of this red fabric paint from the Dollar Tree to just put on some little berries. Then I went back to the white caulk mixture and I started doing some like melted icy snow dripping from the windows like the one on Grandin Road. The next thing I did was mix up a little bit of gray paint with that spackling and put it into a piping bag because the picture on Grandin Road, those houses had some little planters on the fronts of the houses. So I'm going to make a gray planter. 
So how I did this was I took a blob of that gray spackle and then I used a popsicle stick to shape it into the planter shape. Then I mixed up a darker green spackle to use for the plant that's in the planter. And this time I didn't use a piping bag though. I just uh, used a popsicle stick and just swirled it on top of the planter. And I did get a little messy with that gray spackle. So I went back in with some of my brown gingerbread color paint and I just painted over it. The next part totally makes no sense because it's winter, it's snowing. There shouldn't be flowers on the bush, but <laughs> I wanted there to be flowers on the bush. So I used some pink acrylic paint in the back end of a paintbrush just to tap some little pink dots onto my little plant. Now I'm mixing up another whole jar of that spackle with a little bit of white paint to do some fluffy white snow for the ground. And so I'm doing this in a piping bag and then I'm gonna pipe that all around the base of the house. I did put some wax paper under my house so that it wouldn't drip over onto my table. And do be aware that this is going to have to set for probably 24 hours for it to harden completely. So don't be touching or messing with this gingerbread house for a long bit until this has set. Now, while that snow was setting up, I wanted to make some drippy icicle snow stuff that would be hanging off the roof. And the way I did that was that I measured the roof, the front and back and the sides, and I'm using my ruler to use my glue gun to pipe out a line on this silicone mat and just draw those icicles and whatever melty things the length that I need them to be to go on the roof. And when they dry, they peel right up and they can be glued onto the gingerbread house. But first you'll wanna paint them and I used white acrylic paint. Then hot glue them right on and isn't that neat? This is the first time that I've tried doing this hot glue trick with anything and I'll be doing it a lot more. The next morning after the spackle had set up and dried, then I was going to dust the roof with some of this pink glitter. And the way that I'm going to get the glitter to stick is by using a really thin coat of this watered down white school glue but I think you could probably use spray adhesive or Mod Podge. Then just the tiniest bit of sprinkles of that glitter on the roof, just a dusting. And I also put some on the ground snow. There's only a couple of little details left to do and the gingerbread house will be done. I used a little snippet of some garland to make a wreath for the front door. I just trimmed and trimmed and trimmed until it was just the right size for our little house. But remember, this is a birdhouse, so there's a hole in our door. So <laughs> I see that the wreath will fit, that's fine. But I'm going to now make a window for the door and I'm using a jumbo size craft stick to do that. I'm just gonna cut one end off and it's gonna be an arched window. Isn't that the perfect thing to cover up that hole? So now I'll paint that white. Back to the tiny wreath, I figured it needed a little ribbon to hang on. So I cut the tiniest little sliver of ribbon for the wreath to hang with. And last minute, I decided there should be snow on the wreath, so I painted some white acrylic paint on there. Then I glue the window on the door, and then I glue the wreath to the window. As for the second floor, the little hole in the dog box up top, I figured it was the size of a nickel. So I traced out that nickel onto a little piece of cardboard and then I painted that piece with the gingerbread color paint. After that paint was dry, I drew on the little details for the window with a white metallic marker, which didn't show up very good. So then I went back and did it with white acrylic paint. And finally glued the last piece onto the gingerbread house. Oh yeah, and the final detail, the doorknob. I didn't know the entire time what color I wanted that doorknob to be, so I saved it for last and I just went with black. I spent $8.75 to make my gingerbread house.
first one, you'll need a piece of wood. This is a scrap piece of wood from the Dollar Tree that measures 12 inches by about one and a half inches wide. The Dollar Tree wood pieces are usually pretty rough, so you'll want to sand it down. Then paint all the sides with white chalk paint. Now you'll need some bottle brush trees, and this set came from Target. And you can use any kind of bottle brush trees that you like, but I think it's more interesting if you have a variety of colors. So I'm just standing these little trees up on the wood piece and getting an idea of how I want them spread out. And then I'm going to go back and use wood glue to attach them all to the piece of wood. I wanted the front of the wood piece to say Merry Christmas and there's a variety of different ways that you could do this. You could cut something with your vinyl cutter, you could hand write it, but I'm going to use the printing on tissue paper method to get Merry Christmas transferred onto the wood piece. So cut down a piece of white tissue paper and you want to use tape to tape it on to a nice piece of cardstock, a heavier piece of paper, scrapbook paper, just something heavier for it to grab onto through the printer. Then run it through your printer like normal and your words will print on the tissue paper. When it came out, I started to cut it before I remembered. You are supposed to seal it first before you transfer it onto anything so that the ink doesn't run. And the way that I seal it is with just a very, very light coating of hairspray. And now I'm just waving it around to get the hairspray to dry. Then cut out your words. Apply some Mod Podge to the wood piece and gently lay your words in place. And you can use your finger to smooth out any wrinkles. Then brush on more Mod Podge on top and let it set to dry. I love the simplicity of just this piece of block wood and these little trees. today is inspired by a pottery barn twiggy tree and so to get this look I'm going to use the borax crystal method so first you'll need one of the Dollar Tree white Christmas trees and a box of borax when you take the tree out of the box it's up to you whether or not you want to use the little stand legs or not for this particular project I'm not going to use them but that's not to say you can't to get the twiggy tree look, I decided I would need to give this tree a haircut. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim off all of the little pieces that makes this a Christmas tree, trying to cut as close to the wire as possible. I know this seems strange, but the crystals will look better with less of that white plasticky stuff. When you get done with that, it should look something like a shaved poodle, at least in my mind, I thought it did. And now you need to make sure that the branches are pointed in directions that's going to accommodate for whatever pot you're using. So you're gonna have a big pot of water with dissolved borax in it. And whatever size pot you're using, you need to make sure that all of your branches are going to be able to be submerged into the water. And also try to spread your branches out so that they're not touching each other so much. Also, I prefer to use a pot that is not for cooking. So this is just a junk store pot and I'm filling it with two gallons of boiling water. To the water, I added seven cups of borax. and then stir until it's all dissolved and it only takes a couple of minutes. Then submerge your tree into the borax water and make sure that all your branches are covered. To get the best crystals, you need to let this set untouched for eight hours or overnight. So I started this project about 12.30 one day. 
I left it the whole rest of the day and overnight, and the next morning, this is what I came back to. It was perfect and exactly what I was hoping for. So the crystals did form on the little twiggy branches, and it looks just like ice. It looks like this is a tree that was outside in an ice storm, and I absolutely am mind blown. I heard someone say to spray sealant on your crystals once you're done, and I figured it couldn't hurt, and this is the kind I used. But that doesn't mean that the crystals won't fall off the tree. Some of them will. It's kind of like working with glitter, so it can be messy, but still worth it to get this pretty crystallized tree. Now the next part is optional. You could use the legs that come with the tree for it to stand up, but I decided to go more the Pottery Barn route, and so I'm using this block of wood, and I know it's already used. I use it for drilling holes in stuff, so I'm using this scrap wood, and it's gonna be my tree stand. So I've picked out a drill bit that's about the same size as the Christmas tree trunk, and I'm drilling a hole in the center of the wood block. I drilled as far as I could into the wood block without going through to the other side. Then you can take the cap off the end of the tree and it should fit down into the hole that you just drilled. I was happy with the fit so I used E6000 and put a little dab down inside the drilled hole just to make sure the tree is absolutely secure. Now you can use burlap or whatever fabric that you like to cover up the block of wood. And it's just going to be a simple, just wrap it up and gather it at the top and secure it with a piece of juice string. I'm sorry the camera is not at a good angle where you can see, but I'm just using a length of jute string and tying it in a double knot to keep all of that fabric gathered. Then you can add your lights. And this is just a strand of Dollar Tree lights. And I would like to have more lights. If there's a longer strand of lights, um, if you have that, then use a longer strand because I felt like these could use just a few more. Here's a little peek at how it turned out, but stay till the end of the video to see it just a little bit more decorated. Here is the Pottery Barn inspired twig tree and it's little white ornaments and gold ornaments on it. Next DIY is just a painting project. When I saw this bell that was at the Dollar Tree in their shore living summer line, I knew exactly what it would be perfect for. One of those golden brassy harmony bells that's been so popular lately around Christmas time. So I'm going to cut off its tags and begin painting. Now the way to get an aged look on anything is to concentrate on layers. You need lots of multiple layers and you really just get to play around with the paint until it looks how you want it to look. So. Basically, I'm starting out with this white, not white, black chalk paint. I'm just so used to using white paint. <laughs> it's just what comes out of my mouth. But no, I'm going to do a black chalk paint to start off with. Once that's all dry, my next layer is going to be some gold paint. And I am using the little pot of fusion paint. I decided to use a stencil brush and only use the paint that was in the lid so that I can get a stipply kind of textured effect. And that is another tip for aging something is to make it textured. So I covered the whole outside with the Fusion Gold paint, continuing just to stipple it on just like this. My third layer is another gold paint but it's in a different tone. This is called Glam Gold, and you can see it's got a little more brown to it. 
So watch what happens when I start stippling this second gold color on top. It starts giving more character to the piece and starts making it look older. So you've got the black peeking through and you've got two shades of gold so far. And here's how it's coming along. I had a bristle from my brush stuck in the paint. I had to get that taken away, but we're getting there. The next thing is something I've been wanting to try and that is folding a paper towel and putting it in a clothespin and you use that kind of like a dabber when you're painting stuff. You could also use a cotton ball, but I was afraid that the cotton might get stuck in the paint. So anyway, I'm using this paper towel method and now I'm going to use more of that black paint and this is what's really gonna age this bell. Now don't let the black paint scare you. I know that it looks really dark and stark on this brassy looking bell, but there's gonna be yet another layer after this. So if you feel like you've gotten too much black, then it's really easy to fix. And finally, the last layer, and this layer is another layer of the Glam Gold so the more brown color gold and i did not wait for the black paint to completely dry this time because i wanted the black paint to mix with the glam gold to make kind of a custom color and that makes this bell complete well almost i forgot i had to remove the little dinger from the inside and paint the inside of the bell in the little dinger so I'll do a little comparison here. Here's how the Dollar Tree bell turned out. And here are the set of bells from Kirkland's that are like $55. I'll be using some of the clear plastic Christmas balls from the Dollar Tree. I have three sets, so I have six total. And I thought it would be fun to paint them up some non-traditional Christmas colors. So I've got some night sky blue sandstone and truffle Waverly chalk paint. So I'm just using a pencil and that is what's holding my ornament while I paint it. It's not the ideal situation, but it was helpful. These will require two coats of paint. And if I had one tip to give, use thin light coats. That way it'll go on way smoother. And I didn't worry with the part where the hanger goes. It's not painted at all. I absolutely love these colors together. They're not really traditional, but they kind of say elegant to me and go very well with my Pottery Barn inspired little tree. I did use my hair dryer to quickly dry these right after I painted them, but you have to be very careful not to get too close to the ornament because they're plastic and a hair dryer on its highest setting will melt it. Now that my base layer colors are on, I'm going to add some fusion gold paint and I'm going to do a very, very dry brush so it doesn't take very much of this paint at all. And as a matter of fact, you could use different products if you have a gold rub and buff that you would like to use, that would be really pretty or even some acrylic gold paint would probably work pretty well too. I didn't paint the hangers. If that bothers you that they are silver and the paint on the balls is gold and you think they should match, you could absolutely paint the hangers whatever color you like. It just didn't bother me that bad. However, I am going to replace the silver thread with a piece of ribbon. And while I was at the Dollar Tree, I also picked up some of these smaller ornaments and there were so many of them that I decided to paint a few. And this time I figured out an easier way to paint these smaller balls because a pencil wouldn't fit up through the hole in them. So 
I'm using my color pencils <laughs> that kind of stick into the ball a little bit and then I wrap some electrical tape around the pencil and the part of the ornament that the hanger goes on and it made a really nice temporary attachment so that I was able to hold these balls on a stick and paint them a whole lot better. If I would have had a styrofoam block to set these down in to dry, that's probably what I would have used. I didn't have one, so I'm just using some tall mason jars. I'm using Snow White Waverly chalk paint to paint these, and these painted up just whip snap like a dream, and I only had to use one coat. Now I'm gonna do some wet distressing on them. So very simple, just take a wet rag and rub on the places where you would like some of the original color to shine through. And with the little bit of gold peeking through after this wet distressing, these little ornaments match the ones that I painted previously so well. And the last step to making these really pretty is to use some satin ribbon or even velvet. Velvet would be really pretty, but I went with the color brown so that it would go with all of my ornaments. There's also another set of little ornaments at the Dollar Tree that I really liked their pattern. They look kind of quilty. So I took all the gold ones out of that package and I'm adding them to my new DIY set of ornaments. And the only thing I'm gonna do to them is replace their hangers with the satin ribbon. and it's little white ornaments and gold ornaments on it. That is something that I saw on TikTok by Rustic Design Sky and they were so cute looking I had to try to make my own. Again, use the fabric of your choice, plaid or buffalo check or whatever scrap fabric you have. I didn't have anything that was of the homespun variety, so I picked up these stockings from the Dollar Tree. Only one side is printed, but that's what I'm going to use to make my homespun candies. The first order of business is to take these stockings apart. Of course, if you have regular scrap material, then you can skip this step entirely but I turned my stocking inside out and then I'm going to use my seam ripper from my sewing kit to take that hem out around the edge of the stocking. Now I have this ticking stripe piece to work with and this muslin type piece to work with, which I will use in this project. For the little cylinder type candy, I'm using a paper towel roll which I'll cut in half, and so that means I could make two of these if I had enough of this material. Then I just eyeballed how much of that material I would need to cover the paper towel roll. And I used hot glue to secure that material to the paper towel roll. Then take some jute string, or you could use ribbon, and tie up the ends. To get a more homespun look, I frayed the ends of my cutoff pieces by just pulling the threads. To decorate it with those cute stamped words, I'm using a piece of that stocking that was a solid color piece. And so I'm gonna cut a little strip of it out. Actually, I'm gonna make a long strip because I'm making two candies. So I'm gonna make a long enough strip that I can make two labels, one for each candy. And then I'm going to stamp the cute words on it. This alphabet stamp set came from Michael's. I think it was about $12. It didn't come with the ink pad, but I already had that. And for this candy, I'm spelling out the word sweet. Then I cut off my label and frayed the edges. And I used hot glue to stick it onto my candy. 
You really could stop right there, but I felt like it needed a little something else. So I stole this little bow off of another ornament that I didn't like so much and I hot glued it onto my candy. Stinking adorable. So thank you Rustic Design Sky for this idea. For the second candy, I'm using the same kind of stocking, but in the red color. And I'll be using for the candy, a empty ribbon roll. So same everything, I had to take my stocking apart and now I'm cutting off my piece that I'm going to wrap my candy in. Even though it's a round candy, I'm still going to use a square piece. It wraps just the same. Then tie up the ends just like on the first candy. Then I hunted up my letters to spell out candy and I stamped it onto my little solid piece of material. I frayed the edges and hot glued it onto the little round candy and if possible, I think I like it even better than the bigger piece. DIY number one, I'm gonna make a sweater stocking out of this thrifted old cable knit sweater. I'm using the stocking that I made last week as a guide to cut out my pieces and it's originally from the Dollar Tree and I gave it a makeover. First, I turned the sweater inside out so when I make my marks, they will be on the back side of the material. Then I traced around my stocking, being careful not to get my marker on my actual stocking. And I actually made it longer than what this stocking was, so I just made my lines that came down longer than what this is. And then I carefully cut out the pieces. So I'm cutting the front and the back side of this sweater at the same time, so my pieces are exactly the same. You could assemble this using a sewing machine, a needle and thread, but I'm just gonna use hot glue today. And the way that you do it is to put your two good sides together and that's where you'll be gluing. I left a couple inches at the top where I didn't glue so it could be folded down like a cuff on a stocking. And then I just went by each side gluing around the whole perimeter of the stocking and laying the other piece directly on top. When you're finished gluing the two pieces together and you're sure that they're dry, then you can turn the stocking right side out. Then I folded down the top pieces to make the cuff and I glued them in place. And on those side pieces, I sort of tucked them in and glued them in place. And there you have a very simple sweater stocking. It was so easy to put together and now you can decorate it however you like. And I'm just gonna add a simple lace trim around the top cuff. And I used my hot glue for this too. Now, if this were an item that I was going to sell at a craft fair or something, I would definitely use needle and thread or sewing machine because it's just nicer. But for my own decorating, it's quick, it's easy, and does the trick, it's hot glue. Now our stocking needs a loop for hanging and I'm using jute string. And for this, I did get out my needle and thread because I just didn't see how hot glue would keep that stuck. Thank you. 
that concludes the top 12 Christmas craft list and the end of my crafting season. I hope you all enjoyed my videos this year and I'll see you again in the new year. Bye!